Hey everybody, you're watching Edified Productions, and today I have a Nikon 35mm f1.4 AIS to show you, which just came off of my new Nikon f4, really excited to have that. But this lens I got for a very, very good price, however, the aperture is stuck. Now I've already opened this up and diagnosed it, it's oily aperture blades, which should be an easy clean, however that requires requires a full disassembly of the lens. Well, assuming you don't go down to the focus mechanism, obviously. Now, this lens is a little unique in the focus ring is heavily damped. I've not gotten that from a Nikon from the factory before, at least none of the ones I've worked on. And it's also identical in construction to the 85 1.4 AIS in literally every way. How the front element assembly is mounted to the front of the lens, and also how the rear CRC mechanism operates. They're completely identical, and of course, same aperture. I found that kind of interesting, because I've worked on four of those 85s, and I still haven't made a video on one. I've got another one coming in. I'll do a video on that. But without further ado, let's get started. Now, this lens does require me to disassemble from the f starting from the front, and I've actually already made this video, like this intro, once before. And I unfortunately made the quote of, we don't half-ass things here on this channel. And then I realized that some of my audio was clipping. And I realized I probably couldn't keep that quote in if, you know, I didn't redo the entire intro. So I'm going to make sure we're at 1.4 and infinity. Let's slip that out. Slip that off to the side. Now this rear CRC mechanism... It's gritty. It's awful. Like, really bad. Uh, so I'm going to re-grease that. Probably with some light, white lithium, because the main focus ring is so heavy. And here we have the oily aperture. And I can show you there. It's also really visible through the front. Now, I could probably just clean this from the back, half-ass this, and it would probably operate fine. These springs are fairly strong. They could probably overpower one side of oil but as i quoted myself before we don't have fast things here on this channel so i'm going to do a full disassembly which requires me to remove the front element assembly and i'm just going to remove this silver ring that's a, a spacer for the focus and I'm gonna get my cheap chinese tool because it's the only one i have with the round tips I have contacted an American company to essentially custom make me um, round tips for the nice tool I have. However, I say custom made, they're just really short on materials. I'm going to make sure I mark this. Oh, somebody else already did and they missed. So I'm just going to mark next to theirs, and then I'll see where this goes down to uh, when I tighten it back down, if it goes to my mark or their mark. Um, but they're short on materials and can't make the bits I need for the front of my very well-made, actually good tool, which is unfortunate, but that's just how it is sometimes. There we go. Just going to set that in here. There we go. And here we have the whole assembly. Now I could probably clean this just as is. Uh, that wouldn't even really be half-assing it. It's just it genuinely would probably be completely, completely fine as long as I used you know proper, proper chemicals. Now let's see here. This whole thing. Basically, it just goes in till you get to these, and these are what hold it in, and then it just drops out the front. Um, except, it would appear the controls do not go with. I'd have to remove all the controls. Yeah, there's a lot of oil in there. I'm going to have to do a full disassembly, but that's okay. Just going to mark the general area of these. I assume that's what the previous technician that, you know, missed on the front uh, saw and then gave up on. 
I, I know a lot of people that won't touch apertures, and I know a lot of people that will charge a lot of money to touch apertures. I don't really mind. It's actually the very first repair I ever did on a lens was cleaning an, an oily aperture, and I don't really have an issue with it. So we're going to see how we how well this goes. Now, to be quite honest, I haven't disassembled one of these apertures on an 85 or this 35, so I don't quite know just how this is assembled or how it will react to this. Uh, there we go. So that's how, and this is probably going to be spring-loaded. So I'm going to gently rock that over. Okay. So here we are, a bunch of aperture blades, and they are all perfectly intact. So we're going to be gentle with them. So there we are. And this is aperture is actually assembled in a way I really don't like because it's going to be an absolute pain in the ass to redo. But that's okay. That's okay. Here we have this little assembly. Come on. Here we have the control mechanism for how far they all turn, which is neat. Yeah, so this is probably going to be an absolute pain in the ass to reassemble, but for now, I'm just going to worry about these aperture blades. Okay, everybody, now if I'm being honest, I wanted to get this done tonight, so this, yeah, this lens would be ready to shoot tomorrow, but to be quite honest, the aperture reassembly process is going to be utter hell and quite honestly I don't quite care enough to have this ready for tomorrow because it's not even a shoot day it's just I wanted to walk around with it and take photos so I'm just going to clean all these really awful blades and you just saw how awful they were and then I will call it a night and reassemble everything in the morning so You'll see a jump cut and it'll be a fresh new day. Apologies, it would have been really nice to finish that montage with like a satisfying reassembly of this whole mechanism here. But the issue with that is I had to do all this off camera because it required a lot of concentration and a lot of patience because these components are all only held in by the gravity of, well, themselves. And as you know, those aperture blades are paper thin. And of course, since they're paper thin, they're extremely light. And the little plate that sits on top of them isn't much heavier. So I had to do all that very patiently and off camera. So sorry about that. But that whole operation is completely done. This is operating perfectly. And I'll need to do calibration of this probably by way of I probably won't do this I would probably won't adjust it here I will probably adjust the entire system because I already put that back on its original marks so I'll probably adjust it by moving the entire system so now that's done let's get this reassembled 
All right, so we've got our CRC mechanism here. Well, helicoid, I'm gonna stop calling it a mechanism. I'll probably still do it out of habit, but whatever. And we're going to clean it, of course, with good old naphtha, which I don't know if I got a chance to do the voiceover for while I was cleaning all those blades, but of course I use, as with every single time I need to get rid of grease or oil, I use naphtha otherwise known as lighter fluid, but people don't like hearing lighter fluid and lenses in one sentence, so calling it by its actual term of naphtha usually like calms people down a little bit. Oh no. There's probably already still some grease left in that side of the helicoid, because I can't actually access that without fully dissembling that and messing with all the tuning and distances between those elements, and I don't feel like doing that, to be quite honest. Now, one thing you cannot do with these CRC systems, no, helicoids, is you cannot over-grease them. Because if you do, then that grease will migrate up into this gap here, which is where that helicoid goes, and it will migrate onto that glass. And you do not want that. That is number one list of what you don't want. So when you do end up with a little bit of excess stuff up on the rim of the helicoid, you just want to wipe that all away. Make sure there isn't too much that can affect the glass if it ever just starts to fog. And while I don't usually consider myself worrying about whether or not these will be good for another 50 years. I do want them to at least be good for the next 10. Like that's the minimum baseline of what, how long I want my repairs to last. I don't, I don't want them to be like a two year deal and then you have to come back to me. That's just stupid. So let's get this all back together. Let's find that mark, there we are. Now, I slipped around a lot trying to get these together earlier, and that's how I got some grease on the glass. So, I'm gonna try to get this just right here. There we are. Still a little grippy, but I assume that's simply due to <laughs> the quality of that helicoid, which is bizarre to say for a Nikon lens. I think it's just that the connection is very, very tight, and that is why excess grease is really easy to get in there. So, we're done with that, and now we can put, once I blow this all out, we can put the front element group on. And like I said before, uh, this is actually a full day later, and it is only 3.30 a.m. now. I do work a full-time job as well as as a photographer and a lens repair technician, so my days tend to be fairly full. So let's get this tightened down. And I don't remember if I mentioned, because again, it was a full day ago, you can see the cheap Chinese tool I have is bent. It is bent like crazy. Uh, that is due to, so I had a really difficult lens to open and I was using my bare hands and this tool, the steel tool started to bend in my hands and that's not a good sign of quality. I'm just gonna say that right now. Now I'm still curious as to whether this will tighten down to my mark or the mark of the previous technician. previous technician who didn't actually tighten down to his mark. Yeah, that's that's how you want to do things. Make a mark and then not tighten down to it. Smart. And it looks like it's clear of all dust. Let's get the main body of the lens here. Set that to roughly wide open. Make sure the flag is good. And let's get this orientated. I almost forgot the silver ring.
Ah, that little flag is getting stuck. Interesting. Hmm. It will still randomly stick open. I'll have to do a little bit more diagnosing with that, but it seems to be good now. I'll do more testing and make sure that's all good to go. It looks almost perfectly calibrated. I'll probably do that another time since it's so close to perfect. Probably before I either sell the lens because when it's that close to perfection, I don't tend to mess with it, especially if it's functional. So I'm going to see if this is, you know, functional. But that would appear to be my full repair on this 35 1.4 AIS's aperture. Let's just get this screw tightened down. Now I very nearly had a heart attack there because I thought I was not recording. All right, that, that would appear to be functioning properly now. I think it was just this uh, flag hadn't been moved enough. So there we go. That's a, another fully successful repair. Now, truth be told, I got this lens for $199. And at that price, this is an absolute steal. I could sell it tomorrow for $425 and have no issues. It wouldn't sit in inventory whatsoever. And I'm not entirely sure I'm going to. Uh, this was a very annoying repair to do. I hate working on aperture assemblies, but I mean, it's not something I mind too much since, you know, it is something I'm good at. I just really hate be, uh, being, they're very finicky. I really hate it. But that is all I have for you today in this video. I hope you found it interesting. I hope maybe you learned something. Oh, there is one thing I learned recently is that when you're cleaning optics, I learned this from old school technicians who actually did it back in the day. If you don't want to use more of your solvent cleaners like your naphtha and your acetone you just need to get particles off you can use your breath the fog from your breath because it will rapidly vaporize and it doesn't have contaminants that it will leave behind and i always thought that using your breath was a terrible idea because it would you know have stuff in it nope as long as you're using only the fog and not you know your spit oh okay i guess i do have to continue working on that uh, it actually works very well. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you did and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. I have, again, like I said earlier, the video on the 85 1.4 coming up and you'll see a lot more of the same stuff you saw here. Uh, there we go. What's happening? Interesting. Might be it's opening a little too much. I'll figure that out tomorrow. I don't feel like it now. <laughs> but thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Now before I go, I did diagnose it. It's... So when this flag drops, which is what it would be doing in a camera, there are two springs pushing this aperture closed. And when I just turn this ring, as you can see, that does not raise this flag. So it's not getting the extra oomph from that spring. Interesting. It's something I completely forgot I ran into in one other lens before. I don't actually remember what lens it was, but it seems to be also in this 35. So I'll see you in the next video. Bye.